Hey, it's around here. Welcome to a training video where I'm going to share with you behind the scene how to record a course video or a YouTube video and basically the process that I use. Now, this is going to be a little bit meta because I'm obviously recording a video to show you how to record a video, but bear with me here. There's a few sections I'm going to take you through. Before I'm going to explain to you what software I use, how I use it and show you behind the scene of it, I need to explain the structure of the video and also kind of general best practices. So in my case, there is really three different types of videos that I think about when I choose to record a video. And sometimes I do a mixture of two or three of those in the same video, like I do in this video. Video version number one, face to camera, which is exactly what you're seeing right now. It's just me talking to a camera, explaining a concept, teaching something and so on. Version number two is sharing my screen with a camera. So what it means is there's a little bubble on the bottom left or the bottom right or somewhere around the video. And I'm actually sharing my screen at the same time. This is probably my favorite way of doing things because I'm in the tech support niche, software reviews, and I often share my screen because it, me explaining how to do something is one thing, but me showing is a much better way to teach and explain and educate and so on. So that's my favorite style of doing it. And I also do like the personal connection where people can actually see my face. The third option, which is probably more applicable for PowerPoint presentations or Canva slides, things like that. And that is purely sharing your screen and showing your slides. This is great for webinars. It's good for you if you're a bit camera shy as well. This is probably better when you're sharing your screen in terms of PowerPoint presentation or, or Canva presentation because you don't want to distract with your face from the presentation. Although it, this is also goes back to a personal preference choice. So three options, face to camera, camera with slides or face with slides and only slides. Now, in terms of what software to use, some video editing tools have the whole thing in built, so you can use their tool. Although personally, I have found to be better to use a software that is called Loom, Loom Chrome extension, which is also a, an extension that I'm going to share with you how I use not just as a Chrome extension, but as a desktop app. And I prefer to use Loom as a desktop app. Now there is a paid option. There's also a free version in terms of the criteria for whether you should buy the paid plan or be on the free plan. There are things change. So I don't want to say too much. What I can tell you, at least at the time of recording, if you record a video that is less than five minutes, it's free. If you do beyond five minutes, it's paid. In this case, then like for me, my videos often go beyond five minutes. It's more of a hassle to try and do bit by bit. So I just pay for it. And honestly, it's a great plan. I think I pay $8 a month paid for the year up front. So I think it ends up being $96 for the year. It works great. I, I use it pretty much every single day recording YouTube video or recording course videos and so on and so forth. So, and there's other benefits to it because that's how I share the video. Once I record it, I share the link with my video editor. I don't have to export it. I don't do have to do anything. It saves me a lot of time. And then she can download the video from the link and put it into her video editing program and edit it for me. So for me, it's just a much better way to do things. Now I cover my video editing process and how that all works in a completely different tutorial, which is in my tutorials on how I use blue, which is my project management tool where you can learn how I actually run my video editing team and the entire video workflow. I want to stay focused in this video on how I actually use Loom to record my videos. Now to do that, obviously, because I'm using Loom to record my videos, I'm going to need to record my screen using another software called QuickTime Player. QuickTime Player is another video ed uh, recording tool that comes with Mac inbuilt. Now I use a MacBook Pro, so I've got the whole thing inbuilt. And QuickTime Player is also another tool you can use. And I have used QuickTime Player as well. QuickTime Player, the reason I don't use it is simply because if I use it, it's difficult for me to share it with my video editor. I have to physically send the file to her to be able to do it, which takes more time. And it's just more of a hassle. Whereas with Loom, I can record a video, I get a link and I get, I share the link and it's done. So it's just a lot quicker for me, but you can use QuickTime Player as well. So what I'm going to do in this video, I'm going to first of all, use Loom to share my screen and show you how I use QuickTime Player. So you can kind of see how QuickTime Player works. And secondly, I'm going to use QuickTime Player to record my screen and show you how I use Loom. So that's how the video is going to work. Hopefully this makes sense. Um, my video editor is actually going to edit everything you're seeing as well. 
So you'll see how it all flows at the end of this video. And if you have any questions, let me know. I really don't use any other type of tools uh, besides Logitech, which is the camera. I use Blue Yeti microphone. And in the case of right now, I'm using my MacBook Pro and the camera inbuilt and the microphone inbuilt because I'm actually traveling at the moment. So I'm actually in Thailand in my hotel room. So that's why you're seeing the video the way you're seeing it with the background and all that stuff. It's not actually my, my home. Uh, I'm in a hotel. So um, that's what you're seeing right now. But typically I would use Blue Yeti and Logitech. That's the two uh, tools that I would use. But also I, I have used what I have right now many times and frankly, I've rarely had any complaints. The main thing that I would really be focusing on more so is more like the lighting, just so you're clear, and then the audio, so your audio sounds good. Um, you know, just to make sure that that particular aspect comes through just fine. And you know, I'm I'm no expert in these areas, really. I mean, if you look at some of my, my earlier videos, I mean, they're just atrocious, right? Um, but definitely, at the end of the day, it does go back to message. If your message is good, if you're teaching good, then people are gonna appreciate the video more than anything besides the, the audio and besides the um, the quality of the lighting. But obviously if the audio is distorted, it's gonna be difficult to hear and listen. So you definitely wanna make sure your audio is proper. With that said, I'm gonna go ahead and share my screen onto the next section, which my video editor will put onto the screen now. And you will see me showing you behind the scene of using QuickTime Player first, then I'll show you Loom. So it's gonna be more extensive on Loom because that's what I primarily use. So there you go, thanks a lot. And we'll see you at the end of this video. Since I'm using QuickTime Player to record this video, I just wanted to show you what does it look like from my end. So first of all, when I click on it, QuickTime Player, you just want to go to search and I'm using a Mac. So that's some, something that you have by default. You're going to click on enter. You'll see it right here. And in here you click on file. You'll see there is new movie recording option, new audio and new screen. In this case, let's just do an example. So I'm going to do a new movie and then you will actually see me talking. Now you'll notice right here that I can change the camera, I can change the audio, I can change it to high or maximum on the quality. And this is for video specifically. Now I'm gonna do the same thing, but this time I'm gonna do screen, which is what I'll end up doing the recording. Now you'll notice that if you hover over this, you see record selection portion, or selected portion. So I can actually record this part like this, and change it around basically as well so I can record a specific part. This is really good if I'm recording a B-roll of some sort for my videos. That's what I use this for. You can also do other things. So for example, capture selected portion, which means it's just gonna take a picture, I believe. So five, four, three, two, one. There you go. And it will just take a picture of that section. So this is, an example of what you can also do with QuickTime Player. We're gonna go back to QuickTime Player and now we're going to use it again for actually recording something. So in this case, you'll notice capture selected window, capture entire screen. So this is just screenshots, this is video. Now you'll notice, I'm gonna click on record entire screen because that's what I want. And then you see here this option. First of all, show mouse clicks simply means that people actually see as you're moving your mouse around and when you're clicking things. You can also change the microphone. You can do a timer. So it goes five, four, three, two, one, or 10, nine, eight, and so on, if you do this, or none of that. And this is just where you save it to. In this, usually I just do it here. Now, in this case, what I'm gonna do is, you're not gonna see this, but I'm gonna go ahead and start recording with QuickTime Player. And now I'm going to use Loom to basically show you how I use Loom. So basically I'm gonna use QuickTime Player to record a video, and I'm gonna show you behind the scene of Loom. Right now, you are seeing QuickTime QuickTime player behind the scene and I'm using Loom to show it to you. I'm gonna show you now, this setting is the camera setting. So here you wanna make sure that you pick the right camera. Now in the case of what I am using right now, I'm using a MacBook Pro and you can see the FaceTime camera, which is what you're seeing right here. Now this is the camera that I'm using at the moment because I'm actually in Thailand in a hotel and otherwise, typically I would use a camera, which is an external camera called Logitech. And that's the one that I recommend. It's a better quality one. But in this case, since I'm traveling, that option, I don't have that, I didn't bring it with me. So you would pick the right camera. Now, I would just stress that you do make sure that you check these settings first and do a short video 
quickly for like five, 10 seconds to check the quality of the audio, quality of the camera. And once you've tested it and like, yep, that's good, only then record your training video. This will avoid situations like I just had where I basically did this video, which was eight minutes, and the audio did not play at all for the entire video. So I recorded this whole eight minutes video and the audio didn't work because I just didn't remember to actually turn on the audio when I was setting it up. So I definitely recommend to test it out, make sure you got it all turned out, turned on. It does happen, I've done it, it's annoying, but anyway, just be aware. Now, in terms of the options here, of full screen or window or custom size. So full screen means you get the full screen, everything. So let's just say I switch screens from this to let's say my project management on blue, you can still see it basically. And you can see I'm actually recording this video right now, right? Now, with regards to other options that you have is a window. So you're basically going to pick a specific window. Now, a window in this case will be, as an example, this one is specifically blue, which is just this window and nothing else. Another example, and I'm just gonna pause this the Loom recording because I, I don't wanna record just this video. I just wanna show you what I mean. You can also do custom size. And this one is when you basically select a specific section that you wanna record. Again, this is good if you want to record a specific section for a B-roll, that's what you would use it for. Uh, in my case, really, the only time you, I would use it is for B-roll. Typically, I would only really use the full screen. And if I have many tabs open, which I often do with Chrome, I'll just show you what I mean. You will see here that I've got many tabs open. I, I don't want it to be visible during the, the video. So what I'm gonna do is let's just say this is the video screen that I'm recording. I will simply drag the browser or oh, that tab down. I will move it up and then I will record the screen when it's cleaner, basically. Now I have recorded videos where you could see all my tabs open, but I like to be a little bit cleaner. Now, in this case, you can see that I'm about to show you other things, and that's why I have these tabs open, because I'm gonna show you how I use these. So an example, first of all, to go the simple route of sharing your screen when you're recording something, and that is when you're doing a Google Doc. So you would type your script or whatever the information is on a Google Doc, like I have here. Now, this is not actually a presentation, but it probably will be something. Now, because the text is a little bit small and also there's a lot of dead space right here, instead of just making the text bigger, which will only make it bigger in the middle, there is, a, it is an easier, better way to do it. So what you would do is you would click here on the percentage and you would say, let's say 200%, and then it will be way bigger and way more taking the space of the screen. So when you're sharing your screen, the person doesn't have to strain their eyes to see what it is that's written on the slides, basically. Now you will see an example of me doing this on one of my videos, which is thank you page in a day, uh, part of that course. And it's a video on my YouTube channel, which is how to record a thank you video. Now, let me show you now an example of me doing that and recording my screen using Google Docs. So you can see I double click right here on Loom desktop app. Now you will see here, I make sure that the camera is on. I make sure the audio is the correct one. I do full screen. I choose screen and camera. I can make myself bigger or smaller. In this case, I'm gonna do it this way. And then I'm gonna click on start recording. It's gonna go three, two, one. Now I made a small mistake. What I wanted to do is I wanna do my full screen where I say something and only then I share my screen. So now uh, I've got an option here where I can hover over here and I can hover on this button and click on restart. So I'm gonna click on restart recording. Hey, it's around here. I wanted to do a tutorial on how I use Loom. I'm go now going to double click my screen and share it with you. So then now you see I double click and then it automatically kind of makes me smaller basically. Okay, so this is a good way to do it. Now, in some cases when you're sharing your screen, you can also move this around obviously depending on where you want it. And also in some cases, maybe the face is actually just a distraction. Now, I would typically have my face on. I prefer, I feel it's a better personal connection. I feel that's just, I just prefer it that way. On the other hand, some people are a bit more camera shy. They don't want to be on camera. I can understand that. And in some cases, it's also a distraction 
from the slides themselves. And I'll show you what I mean by that. So this is how I do it. I found a slide here. Now you will see that these slides, right now you can see all the distraction right here and right here and all that stuff. Now I don't want it to be seen, so I'm gonna click on present. Now before I do that, I'm just gonna go to page one, just so it's better that way. There you go, I'm on page one. Now I'm gonna click on present. I'm gonna click on standard. There's other options as well, but that's usually if you're using to record using Canva, which I don't usually. Personally, I find Loom to be easier, better, and so on. So now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna click on standard. I'm gonna click on present. It's gonna go to full screen. And here's why I like to do it this way. I'm now going to double click. Now I'm going to now click on restart. Hey, it's a run. I'm going to take you through the path of the tech support membership so you can go from idea to living off passive income and exactly the process that I help people do exactly that. Let me share my screen. Now I'm going to double click and you see here, the screen is gonna pop up. Now I gotta make sure that I click here and then I can read the slide. So here's the success journey for online business owners of going to, from an idea to living off passive slash recurring income and making a living online doing what they love. Then I'm gonna click here and we'll move to the next tab. Now you see now that my face is actually in the way. So what I can do is two things. I can actually move it elsewhere. I can also make it smaller if I choose to. Or alternatively, let's just move to the next slide and the next slide and the next slide and the next slide. And then let's just say at this point, I'm like, you know, this is just a distraction. I can click on the X button and I'm still recording right here as you can see, but you're no longer seeing me. So now I'm gonna click on continue continue, continue. And this is actually better in this case when you're doing slides, I feel, because you're actually not distracting people. So that's just my suggestion. But again, everybody's got their preference. So this is how I use Loom. And when this is done, I will then click on stop recording. Now you'll notice that now what happens is this video is going to pop up here. And there is a couple of things that I do. Number one, I always let Loom demo video using Canva. Hey, it's around. I'm going to take you through them. So you can see that I'm actually recording, right? You can, the video records immediately. Then I would go to blue. And in this case, for example, I can copy this link, go to blue, and I will share it with my VA to be able to download the video. So then all she has to do, instead of me downloading the video and sending it to her and all that stuff, I literally copy a link, which is just a lot easier for me to turn it over to her to start the editing process. There's other things you could do like trim and things like that. And Loom continues to add features. I really don't use much of those. I do sometimes use the transcript, but that's pretty much it. I'm now going to show you how I use Loom Chrome extension to record my screen and record training videos. Typically Loom is what I actually use, even though I am currently using QuickTime Player to record my screen because I'm using QuickTime Player to show you Loom. So let me share an example of how this works. Typically, I use Loom Chrome extension as an application. So you download it as a desktop app, which you see right here at the bottom. You can also use it as a browser Chrome extension as well, but I personally prefer to use the desktop. I found it easier to use, and there's various reasons why that is. For example, if I do something like try to double click on this, nothing happens. Whereas in comparison, let's just say I'm using the desktop app like this. You can see that I can click on screen and camera. You can see me right here at the bottom left. And when I double click, you can see me become bigger. And when I double click again, I'll become smaller. So I prefer to have that particular feature. Now, let me walk you through a few things you need to be aware of. First of all, you've got the option here on the quality of the video. So usually I use this one, 180 HD uh, with 1080 HD. This is the one that I usually use, uh, but you can also use the other one. So I'm going to click on 4K just for the sake of demonstration. But th does, the point is that you can see the video. You could do a five seconds test on each to see the comparison and see which one matters to you. I can assure you I have pretty much never had any issue. Even when I recorded videos at 720, um, I have never had any complaints from anybody, to be honest. So anyway, let's just do uh, 4K for the sake of demonstration. Now you'll notice here that this is the microphone. So if you have multiple microphones, you will need to choose the right one. In my case, I'm currently actually in Thailand in a hotel room. So I only have one microphone, my usual microphone, which is a blue Yeti microphone, which is the one I usually use, which you may have seen in my other videos. Then I would usually have it here, but I don't have it with me. I didn't 
pack, pack it with me. Okay, quick break here from this video. So I'm back in Australia in my apartment and I'm reviewing this video for my video editor and originally it was recorded specifically for my online course. And I decided while watching it, when I finished reviewing it, that actually I wanna put it up on my YouTube channel so more people can benefit from it and benefit from it for free. All I ask in exchange from you is if you don't mind, subscribe to my channel, leave a comment below with any takeaway you have or how you found me, or if you found this video helpful, just type the word value. I would just love to get a bit of feedback from you. And of course, if you care to share this video with others that might be benefiting from this video, you're welcome to do so. If you are not a Loom customer, you can go to a run.link forward slash Loom and sign up using my affiliate link. And also I'm gonna be discussing other tools to help you with video hosting and stuff like that. So there'll be different links below for you to check out, which might be affiliate links. And also there's gonna be other resources, which I'll include below, such as blogs that are relevant to course creation, a blog that is relevant to the different tools and equipment that I use for everything. And you'll have it all accessible right there. So I just wanna interject this little, little uh, ad for myself. And I'm gonna go back and take you back over to the actual training video where I'm gonna move on to teaching you about scripting a video. So thanks for listening and keep watching. So now that I've shown you the behind the scene of the tech side of using Loom or QuickTime Player to record your video, let's talk about scripting your video. So I don't feel that I'm a, a expert to really explain to you how to script a video or anything like that. So I wanna don't wanna dive too deep into it. I can just share with you a little bit about how I do it depending on the type of a video. So for example, if I'm recording a video tutorial over the shoulder software, I usually just know what it is that I want to record. And it's usually like the one feature or the one thing that I'm doing. So it's pretty straightforward. If I'm using that video for a YouTube, I always make sure at the very beginning of the video, it's structured where I say, in this video, we're gonna cover cover X, Y, Z, and I make it very clear what it is that they're going to be learning. So there is, in the first five, 10 seconds, they know, do I even wanna pay attention to this? Is this video for me? That's very important because that's how you get people's attention. This is also known as a hook. Now, the next thing is once the content of the tutorial is recorded, you also want to then give them some sort of a call to action. It could be a micro call to action, such as leave a comment. And you can even be more intelligent about it when you tell them, leave a comment and ask me the question, blah. Or leave a comment and say value if you got value. Something like that. You can also say a call to action, which is subscribe. You can also give them a call to action to go to visit a link things along these lines. But you wanna have some sort of a call to action, even if it is YouTube. Now, with regards to recording a course video, that kind of depends. There is a structure which I learned um, in number one by observing other people and also reading various blogs. And I will share this structure below so you can see. There's a totally different video about how to basically structure a course video. So there's a bit of an outline. So for example, the first step is to say what the person is going to learn, tell them why it's important, share the information about the strategy, share some example of how that strategy is applied. And then I kind of refined it also by also sharing what you're going to cover in the next lesson. So you want to basically create what's called like an open loop. So even though it's a course video, you're giving them that interest or that hunger to want to watch the next video as well. And typically a video like that, three, five, maybe eight minutes. Now this type of a video, I've seen other people do this type of a strategy and I think it works pretty well. So, you know, kind of figure out your style as you go. Now, what I think is more important is that when you're getting started, you're doing it the first time, you wanna kind of script it. And what I mean by script it, at least have a bullet point outline. So there's two ways that I recommend you do it. Number one, start with a Google Doc. I love Google Docs, I've said it many times. And if you wanna see a good example of that, if you go to one of my videos, which is thank you page, uh, how to record a thank you video, that particular video, I actually scripted the whole thing using Google Docs. And you'll see how I did it there. It works really well. And I think it's a good, easy way to do things. You can also have a presentation using Canva. And by the way, one thing you can do is you could script it on Google Doc and you can then go to Canva. But instead of putting the content yourself, you can outsource it to a virtual assistant and tell them, make this Google Doc into Canva and pretty it up basically. So that's another strategy. I talk about that in my VA course, how to hire and manage virtual assistants. So totally different topic. Now, in terms of scripting it, 
and recording it, you might also, depending on who you are and how comfortable you are with camera, you might decide that instead of doing it like I typically do, which usually I just record one video and then I have a video editor edit it, you can actually take your script, take the first bullet point, and then record just that one small 30 second section and then pause. And then do the next 30 seconds or 10 seconds or whatever and pause. Now, this is a strategy that I know one of the YouTubers that I really like and respect, her name is Vanessa Lau. That's what she preaches, that's what she does. I personally found it really tedious and you know, I mean, she's a way better YouTuber than me, so maybe I should listen to her. I just, I, I prefer the efficiency and I prefer to just record one time and turn it over. So again, there's no right or wrong way to do this. I know there's probably other YouTubers who are just as successful as Vanessa, if not more, who do it in a totally different way where they just record it straight up. So everybody's got it differently. They've got their own opinion on how they want to do it, and that's okay. I think what's more important is for you to figure out your strategy. Like I said at the beginning, I'm no biggest expert in scripting or anything like that. I'm just kind of giving you what I found works for me. And I'm also testing new things all the time to figure out how to do things better. So hopefully you found this particular section on scripting it valuable. Open up a Google Doc or a Canva and go ahead and use it, just like I showed you in the Loom tutorial earlier. The last thing I wanna to talk to you about is what do you do after you record the video? So assuming you used Loom, you can then download the video. Now, when you download a video, it will come out as what's known as an MP4 file. If you are using QuickTime Player, it will come out as .mov file. Now, typically a .mov file is a lot heavier, a lot bigger, and sometimes some video hosting platforms don't even allow you to upload that file because it's very big. So you want to change the file to MP4. You can simply change the text of the video file from MOV to MP4, and sometimes that will work. In some cases, you will need to convert it from MOV to MP4, and you can use a software called Tiny Wow to do exactly that conversion, as you can see on the screen as I'm showing you as I'm talking. So that's one option. When you have the video file ready to go, such as MP4, what you wanna do is you wanna upload it to your course platform or membership platform or website platform, whatever it is you're using. A lot of these tools provide video hosting automatically. For example, Kajabi, Podia, System.io, New Zendler, all of these tools actually host your videos for you. So you would record the video outside of these tools. You would then, once it's recorded, you'll have it as a file, an MP4 file, and you would upload that file to these tools. In some cases, the video file might be too big. So to solve that, I have a different support document on how to resolve that, which is simply upload it to your YouTube channel first. So even though it's not gonna be viewable, it's gonna be unlisted, and then you download the file back. And that, what it does, it compresses the file because YouTube accepts pretty much any video, including .mov file, and you can simply upload it to YouTube and download it. There's another support document I will leave in the description or depending on where you're watching this video, but you'll be able to check out this support document. So if the video file is too big, that's what you do. Assuming the video file is now the correct size, you simply upload the video to your hosting platform. Personally, I use at the time of recording, at least I use Searchy for a lot of my videos. And then from there, you can then take that code in Searchy and embed it on uh, WordPress or on system or whatever platform you're using. That's what I do. In your case, especially when you're getting started, I don't even recommend to complicate it that way. Just simply use something like system where they actually host your videos or Kajabi, they host your videos. Just use their video hosting. There's absolutely nothing wrong with using that as well. Uh, so that's kind of a choice factor. In my case, for example, the video you're watching right now, the reason I'm hosting it to Searchy is because this video is actually quite long. This is about 20 minutes, give or take. And um, you'll see on the top, right, there's a transcription, there is chapters, and that's what I use Searchy for because I, I would like to have that. It, to me, it increases the value of my videos. And in terms of me being able to afford Searchy, I'm in a point financially where to me, I want to invest more in my business. And to me, that increases the value of my business, the value of my courses, and I can afford it comfortably. Whereas honestly, like two, three, three years ago, probably when I got started online, there was never a chance in hell I would use anything like that. It just was too expensive. So I've got a different tutorial to explain Searchy as well, if you want to explore that, but that's what you do in in short, you record the video, you get the video file, you upload it to the video, to the hosting platform. Now, if you're using 
other platform like WordPress instead of an all-in-one and they don't provide video hosting, or if you're using Thrivecart and they're not, they don't provide video hosting, you can host your videos on a software like Videlo or Searchy or Vimeo. Again, those are extra costs. So wherever it is, you will always be recording the videos on your Loom or QuickTime player, for example, and then you would upload the video file once it's ready over to Videlo or Searchy or Vimeo or your website slash course platform system, Kajabi, Zendler, and so on. Okay, so hope you got value from this video. If you have any questions, let me know if there's anything you feel that I should cover in a little bit greater detail. I'm definitely happy to do that. I know there's a lot to take in. You'll be able to browse through the chapters to see if there's any other piece you want to refer back to. And uh, that's about it. Thanks a lot. Go ahead and get cracking with recording your YouTube videos or course videos and so on.